The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Come a little closer. Closer. That's better. Now you're on the edge of your seat. And we mean to keep you there for the next 52 minutes with a story of terror and suspense. Doing one's civic duty is one thing. But turning in the hardened boss of a notorious crime ring takes either guts or just plain ignorance. We're not too sure which it was with Amy Hastings, but... She did her duty. She put the finger on Archer Hamlin, the top drug dealer whose arrest and conviction all but put a stop to the flow of drug traffic in and out of New York City. Such an admirable act deserves a reward, which Amy received. A thousand dollars from a city newspaper. And that's not all. Hello? Amy Hastings, please. This is Miss Hastings. Are you enjoying the money, Miss Hastings? What do you mean? The money you got for turning in Archer Hamlin and giving testimony against him at the trial. Who is this? A friend with a little advice. Yes? Better spend that money fast, Miss Hastings. You may not live long enough to enjoy it. Our mystery drama, Having a Horrible Time, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Bob Duran and stars Lynn Loring and Francis Sternhagen. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. How about a little vacation? Some fun and fresh air. Let's go along with Amy Hastings and Lois Wilson on their way to a swinging singles week at the Tomahawk Tree Lodge snuggled deep in Pennsylvania's Pocono Mountains. Swimming, horseback riding, tennis, golf, the works, including murder. But let's not dwell on morbid things. We're off for a vacation at the Tomahawk Tree Lodge, and it's just up the road. I just wish we were going to arrive in daylight, Lois. We won't be able to see anything at night. Don't worry, Amy. We'll have plenty of time to see every nook and cranny of the place. Besides, all the fun begins at night. That's when the wolves come out. (laughs) I hope you don't mean the four-legged kind. (laughs) Anyhow, it sure is good to get away from the city and all those awful phone calls. Anytime a person gets their name in the paper, they're plagued with crank calls. Forget it. We're off for a good time. Oh, I won't spoil your fun, Lois. I promise. Now, don't think about my fun. I can take care of myself. This is really your vacation. I still feel you shouldn't be paying for everything. But why shouldn't I? What better way could I spend that reward money? It took a lot of courage to do what you did. No, not courage, really. I mean, I just recognized that man from the pictures in the paper and told the police. Still, you deserved every penny of the reward. You know... I wonder how he feels now. Who? Archer Hamblin? Yes. As bad as could be expected, I hope. He was the worst thing that ever happened to New York City. I do feel kind of sorry for him, though. Oh. I mean, I guess I would because I was responsible for them catching him. Now, baby, get Archer Hamblin off your mind. He's right where he belongs, behind bars, and it's silly to brood about him. You're right. I'm not going to even think about it. I'm going to enjoy myself. That's the spirit. (laughs) I know the girls at the office think I'm some kind of a prude. Oh, well, there's some bunch. 
In the two months I've been there, I haven't seen one who has any brains. Except you. <laughs> well, it's nice to have you for a friend. I, I don't make close friends easily. We just sort of hit it off, you might say. I keep to myself a lot. I just... I just never feel close to the girls at the office. Well, forget them. We're off for a week of fun, and you're going to love this place. <laughs> Tomahawk Tree Lodge. It even sounds exciting. <laughs> Lois, don't you think we ought to wait till tomorrow? I mean, should we be too anxious to meet someone? Listen, the hard-to-get approach is all right in an east side bar. But here, it's first come, first serve. <laughs> Here's an empty table. Now sit yourself down and we'll order some cool drinks. It's, it's so exciting and beautiful. A oh, waiter, two Collins, please. Lois. What? Don't look right away. But there's a man at the bar looking at us. Where? Lois, don't be so obvious. That tall, blonde fellow. Well, I wonder if he has a friend. Oh, Lois. Amy, we're not here to spend the week by ourselves. Will you stop craning? He might join us. If we let him know we're interested. He, he just keeps staring. Hey, it looks as though someone else is interested. That one in the tan jacket's heading this way and beating him to it. I sort of like the one at the bar better. Well, we have the whole week ahead of us. <laughs> what do we say? Hello is a good one for a start. Oh, Amy, just remember you're a swinging single. Now relax. <sighs> oh, good evening. Uh, how do you do? Hello. You, uh, you girls just arrived? Not a half hour, though. We believe in making every minute count. Well, at a place like this, that's the thing to do. I'm Fred Russell. I'm Lois Wilson, and this is Amy Hastings. Pleasure to meet you, Amy. Hi. Uh, have you been here long, Mr. Russell? Mr. Russell? Now, look, at a place like this, it's Fred. <laughs> okay? No, actually, I just got here yesterday. Oh, a newcomer, too. Uh, how long are you planning to stay, Amy? One week. That's all we got. Are you staying long yourself, Fred? Well, that depends. Depends on what? On whether I uh, like it or not. By the way, you're from New York, aren't you? Yes, that's right. How'd you guess? I saw the license plate on your car. Oh, you. Are you the official welcoming committee? Oh, no, 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 no. But uh, being observant and friendly is sort of a pastime with me. Look, I, I hope I can show you around a little while you're here, Amy, if uh, it's all right. Well, I, I guess so. You've been here before, then? Oh, sure. You know, there's a lot to do. You've got horseback riding and canoeing and swimming, all those things. But, you know, they're not much fun alone. Well, that's what we're here for, isn't it, Lois? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Well, look, if you'll let me, I promise to show you a good time, Amy. How about starting with a dance? Oh, I... <laughs> well, that is, uh, if Lois doesn't mind. Oh, not at all. Come on, then. Lois, are you sure you don't mind? Oh, heavens no. Go ahead. I promise not to keep her long. Have fun. See you later. Mind if I join you? Oh, well, not exactly, but an introduction would be nice. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Ralph Cook. I'm Lois Wilson. How do you do? Forgive me for seeming forward, but, uh... Who is that dancing with Amy? What? That is Amy Hastings, isn't it? Yes, it is, but how did you know? Well, she's the girl who fingered Archer Hamlin last month. Yes. You said your name was... Uh... Lois Wilson. A friend of hers? Look, Mr. Cook, just who are you? How do you know Amy? Miss Wilson, I have to talk to you privately. It's important. What is this? It's about Amy. Well, what about her? We have reason to believe she may be in very great danger. Oh? Uh, let's dance. It'll seem more natural. What danger is Amy in? Well, I'll explain it in a minute. Please. 
I need your help. Now, first of all, uh, may I call you Lois? Of course. And I'm Ralph. Yes, so you said. Now, what is all this about? I'm a detective. A detective? Yes, now, no one must know but you. And particularly not Amy or uh, that man she's dancing with. What danger is there? We're pretty sure that Archer Hamlin's crowd is out to get Amy for fingering the boss. Oh, no. You mean... You mean those crank calls were for real? And that is why I'm here. We think this might be the perfect spot for them. Why? Well, we think one of them will probably pose as a guest, get friendly with Amy, and then kill her in some way to make it look like an accident. Oh, how awful. Well, this is the perfect spot for it. With horseback riding, the lake. I, I can hardly believe it. Well, it's possible, Lois. And very probable. Oh, what can I do? I want you to be my date. And that way I can keep close to Amy without arousing suspicion. Uh, what's the uh, name of the man she's dancing with? Oh, uh, Fred something. Fred, Fred Russell. That's it. He approached you as soon as you sat down. That's right. If he is the man, he'd want to get to Amy first before any other summer Lothario started making time. You know, come to think of it, he did beat another man to our table. A tall, blonde fellow who kept staring at us. And it was Amy he was after. He hardly spoke to me. Hmm. That jibes. And he noticed our rented car had a New York license plate. And he's been watching for you. This Hamlin crowd is shrewd. They don't shoot people from black cars. They'll go to any lengths to kill without arousing suspicion, no matter what it involves or how long it takes. That's why Hamlin himself got away with so much. Oh. Well, what do you think he'll do? He'll bide his time, gain her confidence. It's important that you don't let on to Amy that anything's wrong now. Oh, why? Well, if she gets the idea someone's after her, she'll get scared and he'll know it. I want him to think he's safe. Now, don't worry. I'll always be around, and the minute he tries something, I've got him. I don't like the idea of Amy being bait. Well, she's not bait. She's a sitting pigeon right now. But the killer has to make a move before I can arrest him. This must be a bad dream. It's not pleasant, I know. I'm pretty sure this Russell is our man. I don't want him scared off. Oh, what a way to start a vacation. Where have you been, sleepyhead? <laughs> oh, well, I didn't sleep well. Everything all right? I've been here every minute. Gosh, Lois, I'm sorry I ran out on you, but I couldn't wake you up. Oh, it's all right. Hey, the water's wonderful. Why don't you and Ralph swim out for a while? Or maybe we will. We swam all the way out to that island, way out there. You swam to the island alone? No. Fred was with me. You want to dip before lunch, Lois? Well, yes. Let's all go. I think Amy and I have had enough. Gosh, yes. We'll just stay here and watch. Oh, come on. A little hey, more, it's will It's all right, Lois. They have been in quite a while. Too long. And Amy's getting cold. Oh, all right. Well, we won't be long. Race you to the raft. Okay. <laughs> Hurry up with that shower, Amy. It's time for lunch. Isn't he wonderful, Lois? What? Fred, isn't he wonderful? I've never had a steady in all my life, and now in one day... Amy, just how friendly are you getting with Fred? What do you mean? Um, well, I admit I did tell you to let your hair down and enjoy yourself, but... <laughs> You know, there are other men here, too. Oh, Lois. No, you said you liked that blonde man at the bar last night. But Fred seems so interested in me. For myself, I... Well, I sort of like it. Um, what... What has he said? He... He asks me all sorts of questions about myself. It makes me feel important. 
Does he know who you are, Amy? Well, of course. We all introduced ourselves last night. I mean about... about the Archer Hamlin business. He said he remembered me from all the publicity in the papers. Did you tell him, or did he bring it up? Lois, why are you asking all these questions? Well, I... I just don't want you to take Fred too seriously, honey. You're not jealous. Oh, of course not. I mean, you've got your date for the week. I know, but that Lois, is... I'm really enjoying myself. Let me. I like Fred. No one has ever been interested in me like this before. <laughs> It's nice to be wanted, to be loved, to be admired for oneself. And unsuspecting Amy Hastings is enjoying every minute of it. She's having a wonderful time. It's poor Lois who's having a horrible time. We'll get back to our fun in the sun when I return shortly with Act Two. The Tomahawk Tree Lodge stands majestically on a mountaintop. Lush green lawns sweep invitingly toward the clear blue waters of Quail Lake. To Amy Hastings, enjoying her first vacation without her parents, it's a paradise. To her friend Lois Wilson, it's something else again. Is anyone having dessert? Gee, not me. I couldn't eat another bite. I'll pass. By me. Well... What's on the agenda for the afternoon? Croquet? Horseshoes? Badminton? Gee, you know, it's too bad the ski lift isn't running today. Does it ever in summer? Sure, all year round. It's just down for repairs. Oh. Now. You know, it's a great scenic ride. Go all the way to the top of the mountain and back. Hey, maybe we can do that later on in the week. Okay. Um, uh, what do you say to a horseback ride? Oh, that sounds exciting. Good way to work off a big meal. Amy, you've never been on a horse in your life. I know, and I've always wanted to. I'm afraid the merry-go-round's been the extent of my riding. Um, I think we'd all have just as much fun here at the lodge. Besides, it's too hot. I mean, I'd love to try croquet. Well, okay, but if Amy would like to ride, uh, we'll go along and meet you two later. Yes, I really want to go. Now, Lois, don't you worry. Nothing can happen. Okay, let's go then. Ralph. Oh, it's not just being a wet blanket. After all, we're here to enjoy the facilities. We'll take a shot at horseback riding, too. We're paying for it. Now, look, don't let me talk you into something you don't want to do. I mean, Amy and I can go alone. Oh, no. Come on, Ralph's right. We might as well have the fling we're here for. Well, if you're afraid of a horse, it could be dangerous. We'll take our chances. Okay. Look, I'll, uh, I'll go on ahead to the stables and reserve the horses. I'll come with you, Fred. Hurry up, Lois. I'm petrified of horses. Can you go it alone? I can, but it's liable to look funny. I have the feeling I'm not one of Fred's favorite persons. All right. I'll have to go, for Amy's sake. But I'll have to change. Amy's in slacks, but I can't get on a horse like this. Well, hurry it up. Hmm? What do you think he might do? I don't know, but horses can be dangerous. see them. And they're probably in the stable saddling up. Hi, folks. Ready to go out, too? Oh, uh, yes. We're joining our friends. We've got two fine gentle mares here. Have you ridden before? Uh, where's the couple that came down here a few minutes ago? Well, they're out on the trail. They said you'd be along. Oh, Ralph, they're alone out there. I should have known he'd try something like this. Get us going quick, huh? Sure thing. Here we go, Virginia. You'll be nice now. Oh, Lord, what do I do? Nothing to it. Put your left foot here. Right. That's it. Yeah. Now, just swing up. Come on, I'll help oh, you. Oh, There we go. Oh. <laughs> now you, sir. Uh, I'm all set. Well, you sit a horse right nicely, sir. Ralph, what do I do? Hold the reins. Lean forward. Your horse will follow mine. Let's go. Whew, it's not as I thought. We'll have to go faster. Just hold on. Oh. Is, is there more than one trail? There probably is. Oh, golly, they may have turned off somewhere. Well, they couldn't be too far ahead. We weren't that long at the lodge. Oh, 
There's a fork in the trail up ahead. Come on, the range. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh. which way do we go? There's fresh footprints to the left. Ah, uh, you are a detective. Ah! Oh, it's Amy. Come on, get up. Get up there. We may be too late. I don't know what we're going to find. Amy! Amy! There they are. Oh, Amy! Amy, what happened? Take it easy. She's all right. She's all right. All right. Nothing. She's flat on the ground. Okay, Lois. I just fell off. What happened? Well, a snake frightened her horse. I was riding behind. I saw it dart off, but there was nothing I could do. Uh, Amy's horse shied, and she just slid off. All of a sudden, my horse reared. Well, how come you didn't wait for us back at the stable? We knew you'd catch up. I think we've had enough horseback riding. Well, what do you say, Amy? Do you, you feel like going on? I guess I'd better go in for something a little less strenuous. Oh, Ralph, this is impossible. Amy and I are going back to the city tomorrow. You can't run away from Hamlin's men, Lois. The best we can do is lure them into the open. And they're pretty smart about that, too. But I can't spend a week never letting Amy out of my sight. And he's certainly going to get suspicious with us hanging around all the time. We don't have to be with them every minute as long as we know where they're going. Yes, but the minute they're alone, he can do anything he wants. It'll have to look like an accident, so that limits his field of operation. You mean like the horses this afternoon? Do you think he did something to Amy's horse? I'm convinced of it. Look, she looks so little and innocent dancing with Fred. How could a girl like her get up the nerve to identify Hamlin? Innocence can have backbone, Ralph. Look, Lois, go along with me for a couple of days more. Hmm? Well, I guess I'll have to. But I look over there at Amy dancing with that man, and I shudder. <laughs> You're not mad because I spoiled the horseback riding today, Fred? No, 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 no. Of course not, Amy. You know, you're kind of quiet tonight. Well, it's just that... Amy, can't we shake that friend of yours and her Romeo? Well, Lois and I did come together, and we are best friends. I know that. It's just that I'd like to be with you alone sometime. <laughs> What do you say we slip down to the lake and take out a canoe? Well, I... Without telling your friend. Oh, Fred, they're, they're watching us dance. They'll probably just follow Why? us. Why? None of their business what you do. I, I don't know. Look, let's just go back to the table now. Tomorrow morning, I'll slip away early. Lois always sleeps late, and we can go somewhere together then. Without telling Lois. I promise, without telling Lois. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what. We'll go out to Tomahawk Tree. Tomahawk Tree? Fred, that's where we are. Oh, it's the tree this hotel was named after. Oh. There's a legend about it. Very beautiful. Tell me. Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow, then. You know, this is the most thrilling vacation I've ever had. Well, we're almost to the top. Now, that's the famous tomahawk tree right up ahead. Oh, it's so beautiful. And it's such a beautiful morning. Makes you glad you're alive. Oh, I'm glad you were able to get away without Lois. She was fast asleep. I dressed in the bathroom and sneaked out of the room. <laughs> well, here it is. Tomahawk tree. Look how far down you can see. Mm-hmm. That's Hidden Valley. Okay, tell me now, Fred. What's the legend? Well, the legend is that more than 200 years ago, an Indian brave killed himself here because he was disgraced in battle. He was the chief's son, but he was a coward. And? So he dug his tomahawk into this tree and jumped over the edge. Oh. But when the other braves tried to remove the tomahawk from the tree and throw it after him, not one of them could budge him. Why not? Well... They thought the great spirit had locked the tomahawk into the tree as a reminder to other braves who might get uh, wet feet, so to speak. <laughs> 
It's not very romantic. <laughs> I'm afraid it's not all true. What? The lodge has to replace the tomahawk every couple of years as the tree grows around it. <laughs> Fred, you're making the whole thing up. Here, give me a hand. No, I don't want to go any closer. That's all right, I got you. Uh, I got you. Now, look straight down. Oh, it gives me the chills. You see on the rock down there? Can you see the, the outline of... <laughs> All right, I've got you. I have you. The ghost went over. What the devil are you doing here, Lois? What are you doing so close to the edge? Well, we had our footing, all right, but that scream of yours just startled both of us. Well, what do you expect when I find Amy practically going over the side? Lois, I thought you were still sleeping. Well, it's a good thing I went out for a morning walk myself. Mm -hmm. And just happened to come this way, hmm? I think we'd better all go back for breakfast. I wonder why Fred didn't want breakfast. Well, he's probably miffed at me. But honestly, Amy, he had you too close to the edge. Well, it sure scared me when you yelled. You know, I had no idea that you were following us. Well, I wasn't. I I was out for a walk and, and no, I, I saw you there. Oh, is there there's that man staring at us again. Who? The blonde one we saw the night we arrived. Remember he was starting to come over and Fred got there first? Oh, yes. Here he comes. Is it all right, Lois? I mean, are we already taken? Listen, I don't know who's taking who anymore. Good morning, girls. Hello. Do you mind if I join you? Well, I... I guess not. Thanks. I'm George Smith. I've been wanting to meet you. Well, I'm Amy Hastings. Yes, and yes, is... I know. You do? Uh, that Archer Hamlin business again. Yes, that's right. Well... This is my girlfriend, Lois Wilson. Hi, Lois. Hello. I was going to come over the night you arrived, but uh, some other guy beat me to it. Well, all fair and love and war <laughs> and uh, summer vacations. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, I, uh, I wonder if you might like to play some ping pong after breakfast. Well, sure, uh, if you'll teach me. Nothing to it. I'll get Ralph and we'll make it a foursome. Oh, order me toast and coffee. I'll be right back. May I have Ralph Cook's room, please? Ralph, it's Lois. I don't know what it means, but another man's latched himself onto Amy. Well, it doesn't seem likely there'd be two of them, but the Hamlin crowd's clever. They could send in one to cover the other's tracks. I told you about the incident with Fred at the cliff this morning. Hurry up, Lois. We're ready. Oh, uh, have you ever shot one of these things? In college, but archery wasn't my best sport. Whew, I've never held a bow in my life. I wish we'd stuck to ping pong. Well, let's just shoot for fun. Unless you want to keep score. I'll be lucky if I even hit the target. Let's make it just for fun. Mm, suits me. Okay, I'll lead off. Wonderful, George. Wow. Well, it's a bullseye. Come on, you try it, Amy. Okay. Now, your left hand on the bow. Uh-huh. That's right. Now, put the arrow between your forefinger and your middle finger. Like you're holding a cigarette. I don't smoke. <laughs> well, that's it. That's good. Now, now, just pull back and let go. Oh, I told you I wouldn't hit the target. <laughs> Ralph, uh, I haven't done this in years, but, uh, all right. Here it goes. A bullseye, Good job. Ah, Come ah. on, Lois. It's your turn. Well, all right, but I don't guarantee anything. Right, now, just, just wait a minute, Lois. Uh, keep your elbows out more. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Now, oh. Take your stance. Oh. And l l let me guide your arm. L like this? Yeah, that's better. All right, now pull back. Oh, I can't. It's so A little hard. more, a little I more. Can't. Amy, look out. Oh, it's all right. I, it just oh. nicked my arm. Oh, that was a close one. <sighs> what happened? Well, Lois lost her balance. Too much tension on the bow, Are you sure you're all right, Amy? Yes, it's... It's just a scratch. I think I'd have been better off without help. What are you trying to say, Lois? Nothing. I'm just glad that Amy's all right. You 
were there. You saw it. I swear he deliberately turned me toward Amy. Yes, and that's what's got me worried. Got you worried? Looks like the Hamlin crowd has more than one man after Amy. Almost every young girl's dream is to have several men after her. But it's much nicer when romance is their objective instead of murder. We'll return to the fun at the Tomahawk Tree Lodge when I return shortly with Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago News Radio 78. Vacations are supposed to be fun, but they can be hazardous for a girl with a contract out on her. First, Fred. Now, George, just who is a poor girl to trust? But Amy is oblivious to her danger at the moment. Do you feel like a swim, Amy? No, it's it's just nice here on the grass. Everything's so exciting, you just have to catch your breath now and then. Oh, come on. Let's swim out to the rock. You go. Well, I don't want to swim alone. Well, where's Ralph? Oh, he had to go into town. He, He had... Well, some business to attend to. You know, I wonder where Fred's been. I haven't seen him since yesterday. Probably after someone else. Oh. Oh, come on. Now, don't take it seriously. That's the way everything goes at a place like this. Well, to tell you the truth, I really like George better. Where is he this morning? I don't know. Well, it's good to relax for a while. You don't have to keep up the personality front. (laughs) Hey, I see they've got the ski lift going again. You know, that does look like fun, riding in those little boxes. They call them gondolas. Lois, why don't we take a ride right now? Why not, if you don't want to swim? Hey, I I wonder what's going on down at the dock. Someone probably caught a fish. Let's go see. Oh, who cares? I hate fish. Oh, come on, Lois. It's on our way to the ski lift. It's certainly gathering a crowd. Look, there's George. Something must have happened. The, the boat boy's running toward the lodge. I, I don't think I want to go down there. Oh, come on. We have to find out. They've dragged someone out of the water. Let's hurry, Lois. George? George, what's happened? They just pulled a guy out of the lake. What? Is he... Is he dead? He looks like he's been in the water for at least 24 hours. Oh, how can you tell? Just take a look at him. (gasps) Oh, no. It's it's Fred. Huh? Fred Russell. What what happened? Does anyone know? Well, not so far. I just got here myself. Fred was a good swimmer. Our first day here, we swam out to the rock together. Come on, Amy. Let's go back to the room. I don't want to stand around looking at this. Yes. You're right. I'll call you later. Hello? Lois, it's Ralph. Oh, hello. Can you get away for a drink? Yes, Amy's napping. Meet me in the lounge. Fred's death shoots the two-man theory, doesn't it? Not necessarily. But it sure eliminates him as a future suspect. Ralph, could George have killed Fred to get closer to Amy himself? He could have. And he might have. Well, what do you think? You're the detective. Yeah, I am. I think it's time we got Amy away from here. I'll drive her back to the city tonight. It'll be safer. I'll come too. No, no, no. It's better if you stay. Why? Why? Or give Amy and me a chance to slip away, and you can follow in the morning. Well, if you think that's best. I do. Let's just play it natural for the rest of the day. Hmm? I'll get away during the excitement of the barbecue tonight. All right. Maybe you're right. No, I am. And uh, please, don't let on that anything is wrong. But try to keep Amy out of the way. And don't leave her side for a minute... Don't worry. Amy. 
Come on, sleepyhead. Don't snooze the whole afternoon away. Let's take that ski lift ride. Hmm? Ski lift? Oh, yes, we, we were going to do that. Come on, let's get away from the boys for a while. than I ever expected. Look how high we have to go. Yeah, it's a long way up. You know, it's like the Kitty Ferris wheel we went to at Sunset Park when I was a kid. <laughs> Enjoy it, Amy. We have a long ride to the top. Amy! Lois, open up! Amy! Hey, what's up? George, have you seen Amy and Lois? Yeah, and I repeat, what's up? They brushed right by me downstairs. They were headed for the ski lift. The ski lift? Did they get on it? Yeah, they're on their way up. Why? Come on. We got to get Amy off that lift. Gosh, this is beautiful, Lois. It's just too bad the boys aren't with us. What are you doing, Lois? Close that door. No, Amy. We'll be at the highest point in just a few minutes. What is this? What are you doing? I'm sorry, Amy. I was getting kind of fond of you. But I'm getting $10,000 for doing my duty. What? What are you talking about? The Hamlin family is paying me $10,000 to kill you. What? For fingering Archer Hamlin. But, but Lois, you're my friend, aren't you? I was planted in the office, Amy. To make friends with you so that I could arrange this opportunity. You mean... You mean you're going to I'm going to, to make it look like an accident. I tried to startle you that day on the cliff with Fred, but he held on to you. And that arrow, I, I purposely lost my balance. No! But I missed. Fred! You killed Fred! They'll find a bullet in his body when they do the autopsy. I killed him because I knew he was getting suspicious of me. I was trying to make that detective think Fred was after you. Uh, and then George showed up and I had to switch the suspicion to him. Who's a detective? Ralph. Who else? This fire road will get us to the halfway point on the tow. We can intercept them there. If we make it. You mean Lois is actually going to try to kill Amy? She's a hired killer. I thought it was Fred Russell first. And then you came along. Me? I'm a coal salesman from Philadelphia. Well, Amy's life is in danger every minute she's with Lois. Pray we get to the halfway point before the gondola does. Ralph was sent here to look out for you. He wants to take you back to the city tonight, so I'll have to get it over with now. No. No, Lois, you can't. I... I'll fight. I know. That's what I expect you to do. I'll tell everyone you got panicky and tried to jump. No. I tried to stop you, but you were too strong for me. You fell over the side. No one will believe that. Well, you won't be around to argue the point. Lois, I can't believe you're trying to do this. Oh, come on. I don't enjoy it. I have to do it. The money doesn't mean that much, but my husband works for the Hamlin family. They made it clear that if I fail, my husband will... Uh, well, I don't have to say it. So it's really my life for his? Yes. Look, you said Ralph is a detective. Maybe he can help save your husband. Oh, 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 Amy. Dear, innocent Amy, you don't know the Hamlin crowd. If you did, you'd never have turned Archer in. Don't make it any more difficult for me. No! <laughs> no! Let go of the side! I won't! You're going out! Now! <laughs> We made it. The girls are in the red gondola. The fourth one down. 
Are you sure? That's the one they got into. You're right. Hey, they've got the door open. This is the highest spot, too, just before the midpoint landing. She's trying. Hey, look. Good Lord, they're both hanging halfway out. Fight, Amy! Fight! We do something. Not till that gondola gets here. Amy, hang on, we're here. Hang on and fight! Amy. Oh, George, it was horrible. Lois tried to... Quick, quick, get her out. Lois fell. She, she tried we know, to kill We me. know, Amy. We saw it. Now take it easy. <sighs> get her to the car. Wheel. Let's get back to the lodge. I've got work to do. <laughs> Amy, I want you to stay in your room. And take the pills the doctor gave you. I'm all right, really. My back hurts and my arms are sore, but otherwise... Amy, I'm... you've had an emotional shock. We'll get you back to New York tonight. I just can't believe it happened. That Lois was... This place will be crawling with police by nightfall. You'll be safe here, but I don't want you to leave the room. All right. I guess I don't have any choice. No, you don't. I've got to get downstairs and make some more phone calls. Now, you try to rest, Amy. Lock the door behind me, and I'll call you later. All right. I'll be all right, really. Hello? Miss Hastings? Yes. Are you enjoying the vacation, Miss Hastings? What do you mean? You didn't think there'd be only one of us, did you? Who is this? A friend, Miss Hastings. With a little advice. Oh, no. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. It's an old adage well worth remembering. Those who heed its advice are more often successful than not. Oh, yes, there's another old saying that's a favorite of mine. See no evil, hear no evil, but most of all, speak no evil. You can stay out of a lot of trouble that way. I'll return shortly. The time has come for us to leave the lovely Tomahawk Tree Lodge. We do hope you had a wonderful time. Of course, vacation resorts such as the Tomahawk Tree aren't really dangerous or menacing. That is, if you know how to ride a horse. If you're careful who your archery companions are. And, uh, of course, if you don't have a murderer on your trail. Our cast included Lynn Loring, Francis Sternhagen, Mandel Kramer, Ralph Bell, and Nat Polin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. I want you to bring me the files from the doctor's office. What? I want you to bring me his files, as many as you can carry, only the current cases, the people he's had recently. But, Jimmy, now, I... Let me, I, I, let me finish. I want to borrow those files just overnight. I'll go through them real quick. So fast, you can have them back in the drawers by morning. What, what good will Dr. Cooper's files do you? It's just an idea I got. I mean, this analyst stuff is, is pretty personal, isn't it? I, I mean, they... They have to tell the doctor everything, don't they? Yes, of course. There can't be any secrets from an analyst. That would defeat the whole purpose. Right, right. No secrets. So if I could see the doc's notes, if I could read through them, well, there's bound to be plenty of stuff they'd like to hide, stuff they'd pay money to keep quiet. Jimmy! Jimmy, you're talking about blackmailing. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
CBS News is next on WBBM Chicago.